For RCR Wireless, I'm Sean Kinney, and thanks for joining us for the last day of IEEE Globetom right here in downtown Austin. Welcome to Global Joe, where we're going to take you around the world of telecom and ICT news. And I'm Joey Jackson. As always, we'd like to thank our sponsor, TelecomCareers.com, the industry's largest resume database and jobs board. First up today, Hoy, Telefonica, and Claro are reportedly planning to make an offer from Rio de Janeiro-based Tim. Tim is 67% owned by tele, uh, Telecom Italia. Hoy agreed to sell its Portuguese asset this week to make way for the deal. Yeah, and other big carrier news, Deutsche Telekom is in some hot water this morning. Germany's Supreme Court ruled that Deutsche failed to inform potential investors buying public shares at the height of the tech market bubble in 2000. The shareholders claimed that Deutsche was too optimistic about the company's value and sales projections, effectively misleading the investors. Here at IEEE, we've been hearing a lot about 5G, but there's still no clear standard. I had a chance yesterday to talk to National Instruments about the race to set that standard. I'm here with James Kimry of National Instruments. And James, we were talking a little bit earlier about, you said that there was somewhat of an arms race going on for uh, you know, the standardization of 5G. Right. So I think uh, any company that's, that's in the wireless industry, they're incentivized to be the first with new ideas and, and prototyping those and, and showing those to the, to the industry that they're, those, those ideas are more valuable. Uh, or can be valuable. So it's, it's a sort of an arms race where, you know, company X wants to be the first to prove a, a particular technology. And the, and the way to prove that is through prototyping. Actually, when they have an idea, uh, if they can prototype the idea fast or faster than their competition, then, the, then they are the leaders and then they can uh, go and work with the standardization bodies and drive those ideas through standardization. And you were doing a demonstration with uh GFDM, correct? That's correct. Uh, and kind of comparing it to OFDM. That's right. And so you said that there's like GFDM and like five others are competing. Can you just tell me a little bit about those? Yeah, so let's talk about physical layer uh, waveforms, new waveforms for 5G as opposed uh, to what's there in 4G. So in, in 4G, the standard is OFDM, more orthogonal frequency division multiplexing. And so the research for 5G is looking at new waveforms basically to address some of the deficiencies of OFDM, such as you know high peak to hour, average ratio and uh, um, higher side lobes, which can, can limit your spectrum. So GFDM is a, is a new technique, a new waveform that builds on the OFDM concept and addresses the issue of uh, out-of-band out of spectrum uh, spectral leakage as well as the high peak to average ratio. And so the demonstration you saw was with our new LabVIEW Communications System Design Suite, you know, using our LTE application framework and adding the GFDM component to that. So what better way to do 5G research than start with 4G, right? Definitely, and, and it definitely made a difference in the video, I could tell. Um, so. Maybe can you just tell me a little bit about some of the other ones that are competing with GFDM? Right. There's uh, there's several others. There's uh, UFMC or Universal Filter uh, Multi Carrier, which uh, which is a similar technique to GFDM. There's uh, uh, multi multi carrier filter bank. That's another one. And then um, different companies, different uh, institutions are are promoting uh, promoting these. And so, uh, to the best of my knowledge. This GFDM uh, demonstration that we have here is the first one that actually is real time and showing results. So that, that's pretty good. Yeah, that's very cool. Um, yeah. And so, I mean, do you see one of them winning out of the, over the others? Well, you know, uh, that's a really good question. Uh, behind us, you'll see uh, demonstrations for millimeter wave and massive MIMO, and those are other uh, techniques that could be used for, for uh, 5G. And I, uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of great ideas for 5G, and I think what you'll see is some of the best ideas will can be bind um, with other ideas over time. Yeah. And so you'll say GFDM might be working with massive MIMO, which ultimately may be working with millimeter wave. Yeah, to provide, to provide the solutions yeah. that, that need to happen. So. But I think uh, you know going back to the first question, the company that's there first with a prototype where it actually can demonstrate that's where. Uh, the benefit is uh, for them to be able to prototype faster and prove that. That's going to launch the 5G, huh? I hope so. I hope so. All right. Thanks for that report, Joey. We've all been learning a lot about 5Gs at these shows, and uh, we keep hearing 2020 is the target date for commercial deployment. So I guess it's good that we're setting the standards now and uh, 
a lot well, of R&D to do in the next five years. Yeah, yeah, exactly. All right, well now we're gonna take you through a few headlines dealing with big data, specifically Hadoop, an open source software framework used for distributed data storage and processing. MapR Technologies, that's the company that provides Hadoop distribution, announced that their product's being deployed in Australia by Media Hub. Now, Media Hub provides SD and HD digital content to broadcasters. More Hadoop news, data integrator Unify Software announced it's raised $4.45 million in seed financing. Unify will use the money to scale the business and jumpstart development of data acquisition and integration software. Unify's early access program is already in use by six Fortune 500 companies. More on big data, Context Relevant has upgraded its Cloudera certification to include enhanced security features. Context Relevant specializes in predictive data analytics. Cloud Cloudera is a Hadoop-based data management platform. More Cloudera news, the company announced it's opening three offices in China, including posts in Beijing and Shanghai. The company said the new offices will help accelerate Cloudera's Asian presence, and everybody wants a, pr a presence in Asia. Oh yeah, EMEA in general, it's just tons of emerging markets and huge consumer base. They're putting up towers like crazy, so. That's right, yeah, yeah. China Mo or China Tower, right? The new uh, uh, firm that's the joint venture from the three big telco operators is something a million, like, yeah, <laughs> next a million year. towers? Amazing. Yeah. All right, finally this morning, SK Telecom just released some pretty cool technology. Let's take a look. The tech works through devices that are compatible with Bluetooth 4.0 or higher. Looks like an interesting device, obviously uh, part of this coming Internet of Things revolution, right? Yep. Uh, yeah, and I had a chance to look uh, at AT&T's new connected car that makes use of some, of some of that IoT technology. There's a great video of that up on RCR Wireless News site. Yeah, and you know, I also had a chance, uh, we're here at IEEE Globe, Tom, in downtown Austin. Uh, one of the keynotes this week was from Cisco's chief development officer, and he talked a lot about what the IoT revolution is going to look like from a provider's end. And I mean, any way you slice it, all the numbers are tracking for 50 billion connected devices by 2020, so that's just huge. And uh, that keynote address that I mentioned is up on the RCR Wireless News YouTube channel if you want to take a look at that. And a big thank you to our sponsor, TelecomCareers.com. That's all for us. Yep, thanks Th for joining us for Global Joe, and we'll see you right back here for Mobile Midday News.